Hey everybody, it's another day and time for another unboxing here on the Mobile Tech Podcast channel. I'm Miriam or Tank Girl and I'm going to walk you through this. The Gemini PDA from Planet Computers. Now you're going to say, Miriam, you're about a year behind the party here. Yes, this device came out about a year ago. And I've been asking for a review device for a long time, but I reconnected with the team at Planet Computers at CS. You probably saw my hands-on with the new Cosmo device that they're making. So, uh, yeah, um, I'll probably get my hands on that as well. And right now, in the meantime, I, they sent me this, finally. So this is the Gemini PDA from Planet Computing. You can see here from this photo what you're to expect. It's a tiny, tiny little Android clamshell laptop-y things. Uh, it's also a phone. That's what you have on the other side, same thing. Uh, Planet Computer logo on both sides. Uh, some information here. Um, uh, this is actually a 4G version. There's a Wi-Fi only version. So this actually has more than just Wi-Fi, it has LTE. Um, and that's what's in the box. Now, you have to remember this is not an unboxing per se because, you know, I'm doing this live as always, but I've, this didn't come to me new. So it's, it's, it's in very good shape and it's almost as good as a real unboxing, but the box was already open and the you know, device was already used. So I set it up and in a, because of that, you're gonna get a little more than an unboxing. I'm actually gonna walk you through some of the features on the phone. Um, PDA, laptop -y thing. Uh, and so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, let's get started unboxing this real quick. Ta-da, look at this presentation. Isn't that cool? And then uh, you do this and there it is in its box. So let's put it out. Uh, I'm gonna just like do this because it'll probably be easier. There we go. There's the phone slash PDA slash laptop thingy. I'm gonna put it aside and let's go through the rest of the box real quick so you know what else is in here. There's a divider. There is a tiny little um, thing here for documentation. It's actually got a bunch of stuff in here that's kind of interesting. So we've got a little chamois cloth to clean the screen and I'll get to the why that's important in a minute. We've got a um, bunch of stuff like a quick start guide. I'll look at that in a second. And we've got stickers. Somebody here didn't use these yet, which is great. So that's kind of like an almost having an unboxing. And then we've got this little tool here. And as you see here, it says cover removal tool. This is how you get to the SIM card and micro SD slot. All right, so that's uh, almost done with the unboxing. We've got an AC adapter here, USB type A on one end. Uh, here are some of the specs on that. Travel charger, there's a little cover on it, so it's kind of hard to read. Everything is very uh, murky. And then we've got one last thing in the box, and you know what that is, it's the USB cable. If I can get it out of there, wow. All right, here we go. So this is just, as you'd expect, USB A on one side right there to USB C, which is hiding right in there. So USB-C to USB-A to go with the charger, nothing to write home about. That's it for the box, folks. Let's look at the quick start guide and let's look at the phone real quick. So thank you for your purchase of Gemini. By the time you get this document, you will have had first-hand experience of touching Gemini. It's special, isn't it? A lot of time and care went to designing Gemini and bringing it to life with the world at your fingertips. We hope you enjoy typing on the small on a small form factor keyboard. Let me bring this a little closer to you. You can pause it here. And if you have any questions or just want to say hi, email us at hello at planetcomputers.co.uk. This is a UK-based company. And we love to hear uh, from our customers. Thanks, Planet Computers. So this is what's in the box, the Gemini the A to C cable, the charger, removal tool, some stickers on a microfiber cloth. And here we go, charge your Gemini. All right, so the battery comes with half charge, but here's the thing, you can't charge from both ports. You can only charge from the port on the left side, and that's why this illustration matters. And this tells you a little bit on how to turn it on and some basic functionality. Um, and then here's some other functionality. You see there's an array of LED in the lid 
which I'm going to show you and get to in a minute. And then this is what the ports are on the side. So the left hand side has a USB C and audio, and then there's like a quick, like a, they call it a start button, but I think it might be reprogrammable. It's just like a convenience key. And another USB C port. This is how you remove the cover to get to the SIM and the micro SD card uh, using that special tool I showed you. And then finally here is how you put it back. So there you go. Let's look at the phone, shall we? Ta-da! So that's what it looks like. To give you some perspective, I'm gonna pull out my Pixel 3. Uh, give me a second. Here we go. Here's my Pixel 3 in a case. So to give you an idea on size, it's not that much bigger than a Pixel 3 XL, okay? Um, and thickness, of course, is gonna be a little different because, again, remember my Pixel 3 XL is in a case, but you get an idea, right? If I remove the Pixel 3 XL from the case, it's a, quite a bit thinner, right? So there you go. So, size-wise, it's not huge, right? Um, so that's cool. All right, now, this is the front, this is the back, you know, uh, this is the left side, headphone, USB-C, microphone, uh, the right side, uh, that start key, convenience key, USB-C that you can charge, another microphone. Notice that speaker grills on both sides, but also speaker grills continue here, so on, the, on either side, so you have a good Get resonance cavity for the speakers in there. They should sound good. We're going to test that out in a minute. And then, opening it up. Boom! Look at that. So this keyboard feels really good. Now, I read reviews about this in the last year, and a lot of people complained about the keyboard, but honestly, I think this is perfectly usable. Um, you know, it's definitely better than BlackBerry Key 2 or some of the sliders we used to have, like HTC sliders back in the day. So that's got me excited. Um, and as you can see, there is a little camera up here. It's a five megapixel front facing camera. Nothing too exciting, nothing to write home about. Let's turn it on. So again, I have already unboxed this and played with it a bit because this box was already open. It wasn't, I couldn't do a full unboxing because, well, you know, uh, somebody had used it before. So that's why there's no screen protection to remove or anything, but it's in perfect condition and the accessories were untouched. So I figured I'd give you kind of a mini unboxing and now I'm gonna walk you through some of the things. This LED here lights up in red when the caps locks are on, which I'll show you, and in blue for booting. And as you can see here, we are connected. So I'm going to unlock this off screen. And now we're in. And you can see the launch, the landscape launcher. Also going to connect to the Wi-Fi real quick. Uh, not that I need to, but here we go. All right. So. Of course, it's Android, so you got a touch screen and everything. Now, notice also that I'm connected to via VoLT and 4G. There's a dual SIM. You see the second slot is not enabled right now. And to, if you look, I'm, you know, connected to, what's the network? Project Phi. Yes, I put my Project Phi SIM in here, so you know that's possible. All right. So, here I am, San Francisco, with this in Project Phi, no issues, full bars of 4G, because it's on T-Mobile, obviously. All right, now, this screen looks a little small, right? Because, it, you know, there's bezel top and bottom, this is kind of where the screen starts and ends. But if you look carefully, this is actually an 18.9 display, 1080p, six inches across. So it's actually pretty cool. I don't know why this app just crashed, I've never seen that before. Now, this is on auto brightness, but you can make it brighter, you know, so it's not like, um, it's not like, what I was going to say, it's, it's, it's not like dim or anything. It, it's a very bright room right now. So, so there we go. All right. Um, let's see. What else is it show you? The keyboard? So here are some of the cool features of this keyboard. Let's say I start Chrome and start uh, maybe the Play Store. All right. So now we've got two apps running in the background. Now I can Alt-Tab between them. You see? 
So I can alt tab and go to this one, alt tab and go to that one, you know, it's pretty cool. So yeah, so that's kind of one of the things you can do here. Um, and let me go back into Chrome real quick here, get rid of this tab. So, you know, you can go to, you know, in gadget or whatever. There you go. All right. So I'll tabbing again, you know, brings you your uh, recent apps and lets you select. You can also kill a recent app by going delete. And when you're in alt tab, alt delete. There you go. Uh, control C works. So, you know, if I type something in here, hello world, I can control A all this, control C it, control V it, you know, and control A and delete, and then, you know, control V it back. So the control cut and copy paste keys work. I'm gonna turn down the brightness again because it's a little cranky there, a little, a little bright for the camera. So there you go. Now you know that all these copy paste shortcuts work, which is great. Another thing is that if you tap the planet key, you get this like little launcher and you can configure this any way you want. And so you can quickly navigate with the keyboard through these apps and, and, and basically launch them, right? I want maps, boom, there I am in maps, okay? So that's kind of where this gets really interesting is that you can use most of this through the keyboard. All right, now you also notice there's a function key down here in case you're wondering. That's the launcher key here, brings up that launcher and it's the function key that I was talking about. So function, anything that's kind of the bottom edge of the keyboard is function. So for example, if you want the euro symbol, you can go function, uh, sorry, that's the pound. You can get the pound symbol, the euro is right next to it. Um, and then if you want to, for example, uh, do the caps, it's, there you go, it's on. So it's function tab, which has the caps on the bottom, you see? It says caps there, there you go. So it's very cool that they've thought of these shortcuts on everything. You have everything here from volume up and down, brightness up and down, um, you know, home, the home uh, screen, you can hang up a call, take a call, uh, whatever. So basically you can use this thing without the touch screen if you want to, which, you know, if you, it'll take some getting used to, but I think this is kind of one of those things that's gonna be really cool once you get the hang of it. All right, so of course touchscreen works. Uh, I noticed the screen's a bit of um, of like a fingerprint magnet. It doesn't have to, it doesn't seem to have a very good oleophoric coating, the kind of coating that prevents fingerprints. So it's there, and as you can see, it's very reflective. You can kind of see me in there. Uh, so yeah, that could be improved. Of course, the screen looks very 69-ish, even though it's an 18 by nine screen because there's bezels on both sides here, right? Um, this one's pretty thick, right? And this one's a little thinner. But look, it's still a very large display, six inches, 1080p. And this keyboard really, wow, feels amazing. I mean, I'm surprised a lot of people pan this keyboard and I think it's great, honestly. So what else should you know about this device? Well, I showed you the stereo speakers before in the microphone. So yes, you can make calls, speakerphone calls, regular calls. It's a little clumsy when you want to call comes in because you get these LEDs up here that I'll show you in a second that will like notify you a call is coming. You kind of have to open the phone and accept the call, which you know is a little, little cumbersome, you know? Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. Then the other thing, so I'm not sure I would use this as a phone, but as an accessory kind of like productivity device, if you have to write a lot, this might actually be pretty damn cool, especially since they've optimized all this stuff, right? To run uh, off of the keyboard with shortcuts. So. Kudos to them for that. Um, okay, you're gonna ask me, what are the specs? What's inside here? So this is a year old, remember? They're coming out with that new one, Cosmo. I think it's called Cosmo, maybe I'm wrong. But uh, the Cosmo Communicator is the replacement. It has a tiny little OLED screen and front and rear camera, a bigger 24 megapixel, I think, rear camera. Uh, but otherwise it's the same. It also has a Snapdragon processor of some kind. This is powered by, um, me, uh, a, a MediaTek Helio X27, which is a DecaCore chip, 10 cores, pretty powerful chip. Four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of storage, micro SD expansion. As I said, dual SIM. One is a physical SIM, the other one's an eSIM. You can program it to go on any network you want. Um, on, the, on the kind of bad news front, let me clear this notification. On the bad news front, it is running Android 7. So we're, 
Look at that, Android 7.1.1. It's a little old and I've run all the updates and there are no updates to update this to something newer. So I'm a little bummed by that. I would expect that by now they would be at least on Android 8. Uh, I expect the Cosmo to start off on Android 9. Uh, but so the Cosmo is just basically same chassis with a front display and, and a rear camera um, or front camera. Well, yeah, a display and a camera on this top lid and a uh, better processor inside and, and more RAM and more storage, I think. Uh, they supposedly have improved the keyboard on the new one as well. So I'll, I'll let you know, I'll keep you posted. But in the meantime, you know what this is all about. And that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, there's a couple of LEDs at each end here and like an array of LEDs that you can program. Let me show you how that works. Um, oh, there's the front facing camera. Hello. Uh, it's honestly not very good. Like, I don't think you can see it right now, but it's pretty crappy. Uh, five megapixel, no autofocus, nothing like that. Um, but here's what I wanted to show you. The launcher comes up from down here, just like you'd expect, or tapping on this little thing here. Uh, in addition to this little dock key, right? Um, so the launcher is just, I mean, sorry, you want to say launcher, I mean your app tray. The app tray is, you know, has all the apps in it. And one of the cool little apps in here is called Ledison. And it lets you configure the five LEDs that are embedded in the lid right here. It lets you configure what happens when what notifications come in. So for example, you can go to all the apps um, and for each app, like for Facebook, I've got it set to Cylon, which is five, uh, the blue LEDs cycling between the five lights back and forth. So you can configure that for each app and play with the notification and get these cool patterns and things. Let me show you uh, what I mean by, um, interesting the back button didn't work in that screen, um, but Cylon is this one and you can see the pattern for it. So it cycles between all the LEDs and comes back just like a Cylon uh, from uh, the Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica days, huh? But it's not red, it's blue, so there you go. Um, and of course you can do multicolor and, and all kinds of things. So that's a kind of cool little feature. Uh, you can configure this dock here um, if you want. Uh, I believe that you tap on here and you go to app bar. You can set up which apps appear in the app bar and reorder them and put them in whatever order you want. I just believe I removed Chrome for some reason. So let me show you how to put it back. You just drag and drop it and there it is. And there it is in the bar, you know? So that's cool. Uh, you can do a bunch of little things like that. There's a lot of customizations that can be done on this phone. And of course the launcher is a custom landscape launcher that they provide. So you probably don't want to replace their launcher. Um, and then I'm trying to see what else there is here. There's a bunch of other cool stuff that I haven't really played with yet. I've only had this for a few, like a few hours. So bear with me here. At least I set it up and you get the sense to see it now. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's in a nutshell. In a nutshell, that's it. Um, what I'm pleasantly surprised to have discovered using this the last few hours is that a lot of the Google apps behave really well in landscape mode. I was really surprised. I didn't expect that. I thought that it was going to be a crappy experience, but it turns out that's not at all a crappy experience. It's actually pretty usable. So, whew, it's quite a long video, but there you go. Planet Computer's Gemini, last year's uh, device from them. Pretty cool. I'm honestly more excited about this than I thought I was going to be based on what I'd heard from other people and the reviews so that I read. Now, you know, Android 7 is a bummer. The camera is a bummer. Um, yes, the screen could be bigger and brighter, you know, but the keyboard's pretty, pretty great. And, um, you know, some of the optimizations and things I've done are pretty awesome. The fact that it was Google Fi is pretty cool too. Um, and of course, you know, most phones work with Google Fi now with the, no issues. So that's nothing that exciting, really, if you think about it. But there you go. So, hope you like this video. I know it's a bit long, but, you know, I like to make my videos complete. And this is live, so it's even more fun. Uh, hopefully you get to... Uh, to see me make mistakes live, haha. <laughs> and then uh, the other thing is I want to bring up is that of course you should subscribe, uh, like this video, tell your friends uh, to join the channel. But remember, this is a compliment to the Mobile Tech Podcast. So mobiletechpodcast.com is where you should go subscribe to the podcast and listen because that's where I'm going to give you more uh, in-depth kind of reviews of these products with my guests. And uh, also it's a great way for you to uh, have something to listen to uh, when you're commuting or whatever. So on, on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Overcast, TuneIn Radio, everywhere, right? Tell your friends, subscribe to the podcast. And then finally, I just wanted to point out that um, I want to thank our sponsor, 
ProXPN is um, one of my sponsors and they are sponsoring this video. You can, uh, if you click on the link in the show in the description below here uh, that I'll put in after I've done this live video, you can get 50% off uh, joining ProXPN. If you need a good VPN that'll work with Netflix and other things uh, while you travel abroad or whatever, they're really pretty awesome. Uh, so ProXVN, sorry, ProXPN, I keep saying XVN, but it's P like Paul. ProXPN, uh, thanks for sponsoring the show. And uh, you know, go get your 50% off in the link below. All right, folks, stay tuned. I'll have more videos and unboxings and things coming up soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Cheers, everybody.